everyone, today I'm going to talk about Lord of the Rings, but you know, it's been talked about a lot. It's not a very new film. I mean, they, they were they were released 2002, sort of two, three, maybe four. And they did one every year or something. All filmed in the late 90s, early 2000s in one block and then released annually. It's a good idea. Lots of behind the scenes work. It's all very interesting. But what I'm talking about specifically doesn't require. Uh, I'm not reviewing the film. Films the film, after all, the films, plural. There are three. Extended edition included. We're talking sort of 12 hours of material. I'm not reviewing 12 hours of material. I'm reviewing maybe four minutes of material from The Fellowship of the Ring, the first instalment of the three part series. And it's ruined. It's ruined by one four minute section that the entire film's gone. Um, because you see you see Frodo and the gang. It's not a spoiler, everybody's seen the film. But but anybody that would want to see the films has already seen the films. And it's been years. So no spoilers really. Um but the first yeah, you know, first forty five minutes build up, they all meet, they set off after forty five minutes. We see their little houses in uh in the Shire, that's the one. It's been a while since I've seen it, but but uh the impact's still there. Um so you're introduced to the various characters, they gather round the stone and they say, oh well, I should be the one to, to take it to Mordor and destroy the ring because I'm better than everybody else and I'm responsible and I've got a kingdom and all that stuff. And they round, 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 and Frodo takes it and they all band round him. It's a nice story. Um, don't know, I haven't read the books, but I'm sure it's fairly true to the original, by and large. But, um, get an hour through, all going quite well. Obviously, a bit of trouble. Got to get away from those chasing, usually black coloured animals that are chasing them. Um, so they, so they get, get quite away, goes quite well. And then, about an hour and a half into the sort of two and a half hour film, is the scariest moment in cinema history I've ever seen. And I've seen a lot of films, and it's ridiculous. So. Frodo, and I don't think the whole party's with them. I think by this point... Uh, I think by this point, yeah, Gandalf sort of leaves them. Semi-deliberately, I don't know. That's the thing with that scene as well, where Gandalf's clawing onto the edge of the, the rock and he fights that dragon beast thing. Uh, as it turns out, and you think, oh no, Gandalf's probably died. but. He could have got back up. Ridiculous. He just let go. I wasn't convinced. But and the other did very little to help him. Frodo was the only one thinking straight. Um, but I think he's left them, and maybe they they've split up the fellowship to some extent. And um, my memory is, as you can tell, quite fuzzy on the phone. Anyway, but this particular four minute or so scene seems to last more than four minutes and I've only ever seen it properly once that was enough it scarred me forever and I'm never seeing it ever again because why would I inflict myself with that but from what I remember Frodo is the lead guy he has the ring anyway Samwise surely behind him they go and meet this sort of empress woman and I've done some Wikipedia in. I can't recite the character's name, but it's played by Kate Blanchett, who is you know, a reasonably look, good-looking woman and wouldn't ordinarily seem like the kind to inflict sheer panic and worry into everyone. But that's what she did. And Frodo confronts her and says something like, Hello, I'm Frodo, I've got the ring, I'm trying to do this good deed. And she's... and I've wikipedia this again. She's supposed to be married to some bloke, and uh, she's she's some kind of head head honcho of some tribe or something. She's just the empress of the elf people. I don't know. My facts are very much skewed. Uh, but the point remains. Um, you know, she's all she's quite powerful, 
as she will uh, very soon demonstrate. And I don't know what her beef is. I don't know what provokes the following, but it's terrible and should have been omitted from all of the film. Because it, it's ultimately, actually, irrelevant. Ultimately irrelevant. But what she does is apparently, uh, through a bit of a montage, as she narrates over and sort of beams in this incredibly quite deep masculine intimidating voice she sort of warns him well the future's going to be like this Frodo if you fail in your quest or something I think it's that it's either that and sort of a, a future prediction sort of looking through the crystal ball into his own destiny kind of thing or it's either that or it's what would happen if she takes the ring from Frodo and she tries to do it and so would fail and so would be I don't know. As I say, I've only seen it once as a 12 year old, never seen it since properly. I've kind of heard it in the background where I've literally been shutting my eyes through the scene, panicking, trying to skip to the bit that's after it. In fact, given that, it, let's say it's a four minute scene, I've probably missed six minutes of the film because I've skipped a bit either side of it knowing where it is. Thinking, right, it's coming up, I've just seen the end of the previous scene, skip, 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 skip. Oh, I can still see the horror on the screen as I'm fast forwarding. And I think I'm past it, but I've probably missed the bit at the end of it. It's that bad it is, but it's worth it. I'd rather miss the end of the film to never see that again. But it's the scariest thing ever. I mean, I was pretty damn scared. Um, the scariest thing I saw as a child at the cinema was uh, Harrison Ford as Han Solo in the f second Star Wars film, episode five, uh, Empire Strikes Back. And did it strike back or what? I didn't care about Luke losing his hand or, um, or Darth Vader being his dad. In fact, I didn't really pick up on it much as a child, and as a sort of seven-year-old, eight-year-old, when I saw it at the cinema, I didn't care. That didn't bother me at all. I never did warm to Luke. No one did. Mark Hamill's not had a great career because of it. No one cares about him. I cared about Harrison Ford, though, even at that young age. And when he was frozen in carbonite, and he, 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 he first of all, you see him injected with about a million. Um, uh, one of those sort of injections, those syringes, that's the word, syringes, millions of syringes get into his chest and then he becomes limp and numb and he can't move and he just flops to the floor and he has to be held up by his apparent friends even though he's getting screwed by Lando. So he's being betrayed, he's being injected a million times with stuff that makes him weak as hell. Um, Meanwhile, Luke's gone AWOL, and he's thinking, what the hell's going on? His friends are captured, essentially. And we know that they are the only people fighting against the the dark side who are basically ruling the world. So this is pretty damn serious stuff. Um, and you see him uh, confess to Layla, Leia even, and, um, you know, there's the romance element. And he's sort of plunged under the floor, with, and all you see is this smoke stuff. And he comes out as a, a solid object and slams to the floor. That's the scariest thing I've ever seen, apart from the Lord of the Rings. It's on a par. That, that really... That, I still can't watch it. It's appalling. Ah, oh, it's bad. So back to Lord of the Rings. Similarly, it's out, out of control and over the top. Uh, there, there were, I think the certificate of the film was about 12, perhaps, maybe a 12A. So children under 12 can watch. Although they're not that, they're not that, uh, they're pretty lenient on film certificates and people entering the cinema, but they don't care. Cinemas are struggling with all this pirate, pirating stuff and bootlegging of DVDs and stuff going on. They don't care if you're underage anymore, they just want you five quid. But... It wasn't suitable for anyone, you know, even as a 21 year old, I would pr I would really struggle to watch it. If I forced myself, I could probably get through it, and, and t anticipating what's coming, obviously. But it's terrifying, this beastly Kate Blanchett character. 
She seems to grow several meters either. Like, she just expands, and then there's loads of weird light, and then her voice goes into sort of alien mode. And uh, I think the camera possibly, if, if I remember correctly, the camera possibly pans back to Frodo, who is obviously petrified. And it, it, it didn't have to act. He was genuinely terrified, as was I. And uh, I'd have been damaged from that. If I saw that as Frodo in real life, bearing in mind Lord of the Rings, if you are a character in Lord of the Rings, and it's real, let's say, if you are in that fictitious world, You've seen some crazy looking stuff, you've seen some sort of, you've, orcs are pretty scary anyway, I imagine if you saw them, six foot plus beasts hounding around with big sticks, that's scary stuff. The elephant things that are marching around that are about 50 feet tall, they're scary. There's a lot of scary stuff going on, so I'm sure Frodo's quite, you know, he's gained some immunity to it. But to see that, absolutely terrifying sight. I don't know. I'd have, I'd have run away, actually. And then, apparently, on Wikipedia, she gives him some kind of light thing. Because this is the thing. She gives all this terrifying, I am a woman, I am... She... Uh, utterly terrifying. And then she just sort of goes, Brrr, within a space of about three seconds of it finishing, her big spiel. Because it is. It's irrelevant. Cut it out of the film. She turns into the nice woman again and gives Frodo some... light of... Something, something to help his quest. Why didn't she just give him the light and say, "Good luck, Frodo." Just cut four minutes out and have her going, "Hello, Frodo. You look quite cool." He says, "Yeah, I know. I'm doing a good deed." In fact, she should have. I don't know. Write her out of the part. She doesn't need the money. She's in enough films. Kick her out of the film. The film's long enough. It's not like they needed to pad the film out. It's not like they had sort of an hour and twenty. Or let's make it around 90 minutes. No, they had two and a half hours and they kept that in. And I bet they took some good stuff out, as we've seen with the extended versions that are four hours long each. You know, there's plenty of material. Why choose that? It doesn't help anyone. In fact, that character was far more scary than Sauron ever was, bloody eye. As an eye, he's basically immobile and he has things working for him. That's rubbish. See, Kate Blanchett could have taken the entire sort of tr army of Sauron's men down alone just by walking towards them going, oh, I am scary as hell. She could have done. They'd have turned away and run. And then that's the end of Saruman again, straight away, bef you know, before it even gets to the second film. Yeah, it's unnecessary. But... Um, yeah, I'll never see it again, really. I'm not going to show them. I, if I, you know, children, if I have children, I'm not going to show them that. I'll skip past it. I'll, what I'll do is, well, I don't know. I imagine by that point in time there'll be sufficient technology to wipe out a bit of a DVD. That'd be quite good. If you could just delete a scene. Or have a sort of scene select function on a DVD player where... For example, if this terrifying scene is in scene 22, I can look, just go play scenes 1 to 21 and then 23 onwards. Skip the horrible scene. But they're not seeing it. Damage them forever. As it has me. I should complain to Peter Jackson. It's, a, it's ridiculous. If I ever saw Kate Blanchett in real life, I would freak out, actually. I think I would. Pretty, pretty awful moment. Um, on the, yeah, on the same same hand, uh, Harrison Ford's still alive, still giving boring interviews. So, um, yeah, just what I had on my mind about that moment. Um, kind of spoils the entire film. I don't watch it. I'd rather. The second film is the best because it doesn't have that stupid scene in. And there's a better battle that lasts about 45 minutes. And Gandalf comes back. And what else happens? Well, the bit with Frodo and Spiegel's a bit rubbish, but... Yeah, the second film's just better than the third one I rarely watch. So yeah, that's Lord of the Rings, summed up by me. Um, I'd give the films overall a 9 out of 10 overall, but the first one, probably an 8. Take the scene out, and you've got a 9. Anyway, um, yeah, still... 
in my room, Kobe, Japan. Um, waiting for Sunday to end, really. Um, I've not got a whole lot to do, but that's just what I thought of Lord of the Rings. Hobbit's coming out fairly soon, starring uh, the UK office is um, Tim from the office. Tim, uh, real name, uh, Martin Friedman. That's the one. Martin Friedman is the Hobbit in the new in the new film, The Hobbit. I think it's produced by the same people. Probably Peter Jackson is on board. I imagine he is. It'd be foolish not to have him. Peter Jackson's done King Kong since. He's proved his worth. Excellent stuff. I wish he didn't. I wish he'd do more stuff more often. But no, it's a good big compliment to him, and uh, he's not just a one-man band. But I think he is fairly uh, instrumental in the success of Lord of the Rings. So excellent film, ruined, and, that, and, that, and that's why. Um, so I'll wrap it up. I'll be back with another video uh, whenever I can do. Unless this camera needs another charge, it probably does. It seems to last about half an hour. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed the videos. Please stick around for some more. More content arriving shortly. I've got quite a lot to upload yet. Um, so yeah, in the meanwhile, have fun with your own lives and set back for some more videos soon. Thanks for watching.